Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're out with a landowner looking at the best of British sport. Lurchers with a lamp. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube, we've got Hello Charlie. First, you don't want to be a fox on George Digweed's shoot at any distance. For a change, George is playing catch up with the foxes on his shoot. He may have had 107 since July, but clay commitments during the early harvest and a leg injury plus uninvited guests have meant he's playing catch up with some pretty educated Charlies. A lot of these foxes on here now are pretty wild. We've had a bit of help from outside sources and uh, the wild ones are causing me the problem, so hopefully we can uh, pick up one or two long range wild ones. I've been waiting for the moon to go down as well. We've had a full moon for the last Oh, 10 days that's, that's ruined it and the moon probably won't be up now tonight until about 11 o'clock which will give us two and a half hours before uh, before it gets to the point where uh, there's too much light to really go and do it properly. It sounds as if the odds are against us so George is going to try and redress the balance by treating every set of eyes as a fox who has seen it all before. No calling, just lamps, plus we have the benefit of the whisper quiet Polaris. With our backs to the pheasant pen, a fox ducks through a hedge at the bottom of the valley. Thankfully, we're able to catch up with it on the other side. I've made the conscious decision tonight to come out and just, if it's safe and, and I feel as I can kill it, I will have a shot. It was a you know nice shot down the hill and I could see the full head and the mask and everything else and uh, I'm pleased to have got it. Fox number two is right outside another pen. This one is reasonably close. Before we collect it, George decides this is the one place on the shoot that's worth having a squeak. It generates no interest. The fox he did shoot is in lovely condition, probably thanks to its young pheasant diet. That wood there's got a release pen in it. It was a bit longer than I would normally have shot it, but I'm very nervous of the situation that we're currently in. There's no wind tonight to speak of as such, so needs must and that's doing me a huge amount of damage at the moment we've already lost this week we've lost about 35 pheasants around in and around this pen we've been having one or two kills outside of the outside of the wood and outside of the pen in in this field so hopefully that might have cured some of the problem Although the two foxes we shot this evening have been this year's, George has had a mixture of young and old he believes shooting them so hard last year created a gap in the market Fox 3 is another shot at range, appreciated by Will on the lamp. Well done, that was a long way. You see why I've got problems around a pheasant pin, don't you? George is really having to compose himself for these shots. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those what I would call headache nights where you go out and, uh, you know, normally, although this is a job, and I have to do the job. I also enjoy doing it because we do it well and, uh, and it's a very effective method of, of controlling foxes. We've had to go into a different mode to, to try and get them because these foxes are wild now and uh, it's not as enjoyable, it's not as enjoyable, but uh, you know, needs must. Fox 4 is just the other side of some reeds and thankfully a bit closer as is Fox 5, or so George thinks. I suppose because it's a dark background on this bean stubble and it was sat up looking at me, um, it probably looked bigger than it, you know, and closer than it actually was, but uh, still another good one to get. That's five we've got now. Um, and uh, yeah, we've still got... Another young vixen. Still got, uh, you know, a bit of ground to do yet, so who knows. After a few hours on patrol, the moon starts making an appearance, but not to the extent of it impairing our chances. Fox number six requires the white light. George is a big fan of the red filter, but with shots at this distance and with a partially obscured shot, he needs the stronger beam. Obviously, I'd prefer to shoot in a red light, and I would shoot all my boxes in a red light if I could. Um, but when they're long distance, and a longer distance than normal and, and in sort of, you know, tall stubble or, or, or ready brown ground like on a bean stubble and that sort of thing, 
Sometimes a bean stubble can be dark, sometimes it can be slightly lighter, and a fox doesn't show so well on that. You can't see the silhouette of the fox, so I will go to, to a white light. And you can see that they're a long way away, purely and simply by the fact that, you know, we've put the white light on two or three foxes and they haven't really moved. So, you know, only a fox a long way away would, uh, would, would behave like that in a white light. The next fox we spot is stopping for no one. However, on the next field, this one gives George just long enough. You know, I came expecting and fearing the worst. Uh, we've managed to shoot seven foxes right in the middle of the shoot. We've had some seriously long shots. I think probably the closest fox we shot was about 120 yards up to about nearly 300. Um, and uh, been a good team effort, really pleased. George was worried that tonight would be fruitless, but thanks to some good shooting and a good lamping partnership, the pheasants can sleep a little bit sounder. Thank you, George. Now, for someone else who is only seen in daylight a few times a week, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A new study has revealed that dog shock collars cause distress. Animal behaviourists at the University of Lincoln examined 63 pet dogs in three groups, one of which used electronic collars. Dogs fared better with positive reward-based training and using shock collars caused stress in most of their subjects. The Countryside Alliance has lashed out at prosecutors for inexplicable charges against a British huntsman. The CA has welcomed the news from the CPS that all charges against Cumbria's Mel Brake Hunt have been dropped. Huntsman Edward Liddell had been charged under the Hunting Act and Dangerous Dogs Act after witnesses alleged that illegal hunting took place. The CA calls the charge a waste of police and court time. The Greens in Australia are waging a provocative campaign against their Labour Party. The Greens are accusing the party of supporting male gun violence because they haven't taken the stance against duck shooting. As well as a poster campaign, activists have also left dead birds at some Labour Party offices. Ely Hawk has launched its 110th Shooter's Diary. The bible of schoolboys and overgrown schoolboys everywhere, the 2015 diary raises money for charity, this year supporting the Stroke Association. It's available from gun shops and elyhawklimited.com. Are you American? If so, well, you might be interested to learn that National Hunting and Fishing Day takes place on Saturday, September 27, 2014. Organisations will stage some 3,000 open house hunting and fishing related events from shooting ranges to suburban frog ponds. Join the nationwide celebration at nhfday.org. And finally, cat bites dog. A new study led by the Wildlife Conservation Society reveals that in India's human dominated agricultural landscapes, where leopards prowl at night, it's not livestock that's primarily on the menu, it's man's best friend. Dogs are the top chow of choice at 39% and domestic cats second at 15%. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you David. Now let's look at what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hi Charlie, Hans from Denmark. Just being out this afternoon on the Pigeons, back 63. Fantastic day, good sporting, nice show. Have a nice day, bye. Hello Charlie, just out on the corn with the uh, BSA Ultra. See what we can get. Hello Charlie, Eric Bruce here from Norfolk, Ontario, Canada. Just out here on this beautiful sunny day, getting myself a couple doves for the pot. I like the show, keep up the good work. Hello Charlie, it's quite Mark again, shooting pigeons this time. No rain, it went very well. All the best. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Next up, Tim Pilbeam is keen to showcase the best sport in Britain. He chooses lurchers. What would you do if an international hunter asked you to show them a good time? Well, in Tim Pilbeam's case, he erects the roof tent. He invites you to 
to the full accommodation and then he puts you in a tent on his field. But that's nice also to try that. <laughs> it's Thomas Lindy Nissen's last night in the UK and Tim might have saved the best sporting spectacle till last, but more about lamping with lurchers in a moment. The Dane has been here all week and as the back of the truck reveals, Tim has done his best to deliver all sorts of typical British sport for a chapter in Thomas's new book. It comes off the back of his success with his first collection of extraordinary hunting adventures. First of all, my wife, she don't want me home so many months in a year. And uh, when that's said, then it's also nice to see new things all the way around the world, to shoot new species, to, to see new ways of hunting. Also like uh, hunting with the lamb for foxes in UK. Uh, I thought it was too easy, but I found out that it was way harder than I thought. Very difficult, you have to be quick. You have to know what you do. You have to think about safety. But uh, all this stuff, Tim, he, he, he learned me because he know a lot more about fox than he do about pigeons. <laughs> Glad to see Thomas has spotted Tim's strengths and weaknesses, but we know he's not alone in his assumption that lamping foxes is like shooting fish in a barrel. Another revelation is how good we've got it over here. All the stuff I have tried, you have, I think you have quite good freedom. And even that you have the freedom to, to shoot, shoot a lot, then still the population of animal is very high, I think. So in my point of view, you, you, you have an uh, opportunity to, to smile in UK. Being the host with the most, Tim suggests some al fresco dining while we wait for our lurchers to arrive. Half a pigeon breast, anyone? Doubtful British game cuisine will make the final edition. Right, let's get out to business. We're joined by Russell and Max and their dogs, Sky and her sire, Billy. Billy is a Norfolk lurcher crossed with a whippet and Skye's dam was a Beddington whippet cross. There's lots of lurchers and they've all got their jobs, but you, I've just, personally I prefer the long-haired ones, just because, you know, when you're running through the course, you know, you've got brambles and things like that, they don't rip, they don't tear. Like if you've got your whippet crosses, you know, just short-haired whippet cross, they tear on anything. They're all shaking, they can't handle the cold. So I do prefer my course hairs like this one. We haven't filmed many lurchers and none under the lamp, so what can we expect? The experienced dog will run the beam, he just runs a straight line. Or well, he actually comes out of the beam a bit, so the rabbit doesn't see him. Comes out of the dark and then he shoots in on the beam. So then it's still because obviously if they're running down the beam, the rabbit can see him running straight at him. The more experienced dog will go out the beam and cut in. And sometimes they can even pick them straight out of seats because they don't even know they're coming. There's a lot to this sport, including the sort of ground we can run the dogs on. For example, Max would normally let Billy go on a stubble field. Hitting a stalk at 30 miles an hour could easily puncture the dog's chest. But by now the stubble has softened, so we're good to go. But not before Tim wants to ask Max about foxes. If a fox appears, does it go for the rabbit or for the fox? He will. He would go for the... He would go for either, to be honest, which one was closer, but I would obviously wouldn't let him go on the fox because it's illegal. But yeah, the rabbit, I'd obviously slip him on that, wait till the fox went and I'd slip him on the rabbit. So. Okay. Right, off we go. Our first rabbit is sitting and it's young Sky up first. Russell is on the lamp and uses it to control and contain the rabbit. Waving the light when it gets close to the hedge line can disorientate it enough to stop it finding cover. Unfortunately, no bunny on this occasion. Three or four rabbits in the field, wasn't there? Yep. And uh, the other dog had to go for a start. Yep. And what happened? Well, it was, you spotted that one laying there, and that's quite a good one for her because it's, it's sitting sort of quite still laying there, and managed to walk up quite close to it. And it's a good run for her, actually. I know she didn't catch it, but it's got a nice little run. Yeah. Managed Just to get it out back out the hedge. Yeah, but then it went back in, but it's quite good that she managed to get out the hedge, run along a bit, and then went back in. Brilliant. Yeah. She did really well, actually. Our next rabbit is in really long grass, which makes it very hard going. The conditions aren't ideal. Big moon, no wind, and not a lot of rabbits out from the hedge line. Eventually, Billy connects. So to kill them, do they just shake them, or they just, do they just no, crush No, he just them crushes. Just crushes them. Just like that, just to crush the power of it and just crushes them. So I've done a lot of work like rats and stuff. But they bite them back, it makes them very hard mouth. I bet. Because they just, obviously when they grab them, they just want to kill them. But they do the same to a rabbit. And here's a neat way to clean a rabbit without too much mess. Just 
one. Oh, Got to love it. No blood, nothing. <laughs> well, basically, you just push it, you push it, loose it, and then just put it over here and just, it just makes a nice little hole there, and everything's, got, everything's out of there. Where do you actually squeeze it? Just show me. <laughs> Right, grab the bottom rib cage, top of the rib cage, push down, you get obviously the lump, the whole lot of it, and just put a force on it and it just pops straight out. Just makes a lovely hole there and nothing well, it's a bit of yeah. out of there. So do the um does do the heart and lungs come out as well? Yeah, right? everything. The whole lot comes. We have another couple of close run things, but the rabbits are not out tonight. However, we do have a spectator which Tim hopes will drop by the roof tent right. later. So what has our Dane made of tonight? This is my first time to see this kind of sport in the, in real action. And it was more exciting than I thought it would be actually. Yeah, so did I. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So superb oh. night. Yeah, thank you very much for this trip. That was cool. That's cool. Well done. <laughs> Hunting in whatever form it takes is exciting, which is why people like Thomas are driven to dedicate their lives to it and then tell the world about it. Even on a field in UK you are close to nature, so that's nice. Now let's have a look at some guns. It's Kit Special. Here's what's on offer this week from new gun auctions website, gunbit.co.uk. This is a Brocock Grand Prix S6 air pistol, the one with the six-shot rotary magazine. It's in 177 and seller is based in the Midlands. Start bid is £350. Do you reload 270 cartridges? Here's a set of 270 reloading dies at starting bid £15. The same seller from West Yorkshire is selling RCBS 270 reloading dies at starting bid £10. And the same seller from West Yorkshire again is selling a Smith & Bender 8x56 scope. Starting bid is £150. Visit gunbid.co.uk to see them. From lurchers to the wider world of hunting and shooting on the internet, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. This week's YouTube hunting sensation is Bow Hunting Pig Boar Hog North Australia 2013, part two of four by Andy Thompson of the Andy's Fishing Channel. We are in Norway for a week in the mountains in this lovely film about grouse shooting. Don't let the funny foreign language put you off. Now for a remarkable shot, a nice pronghorn at 970 yards using a Remington 700 chambered in 338 lap with 250 grain Hornady ammo. You can see how you have to lob the bullet at that range. Team Wild TV and car company Isuzu shows what turns out to be an unsuccessful muntjac stalk in Oxfordshire. But there is lots of details about the kit that presenters Keith Watson and Kayat Bryn are using, and some pretty shots of deer. More Men With Beards, Bumblefoot Films makes one of his characteristically off-the-wall films about dog work on a duck day. This is one of the few hunting YouTube channels that make me laugh out loud. Silencer Co has brought out a good-looking promo for its shotgun suppressor. Dove Hunt with the Salvo 12 shows off what it takes is the first commercially viable shotgun suppressor. I can live without the year babies, but Goose Shooting Ohio Early Season Limit by Weekend Woodsman shows American goose shooting in all its glory, including their clever hide system. And finally, only in America, a Montana grizzly bear attempts to retrieve an electrically charged roadkill deer. The deer is electrified as an experiment to protect hunters' game kills. Of course it is. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link. Charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Well, if that lot didn't grab you, what about our other shows? There's Airheads and Fishing Britain. It's almost fry time. Did you know that the autumn is some of the best trout fishing on large reservoirs? It's this time of year where the small fry have hatched and have grown enough to be the perfect bite-sized meal for any predator to fill upon before the leaner, colder winter sets in. Trout smash into the large balls of fry and then return to pick up the dead or injured fish. It's quite a marvel to watch, and as an angler, when you see the boil on the water, flick in your fly and hold on. This is the time big fish stock up and get fat. Expect good fights, heavy fish, and lots of action. In this week's Fishing Britain, Hal Morgan is again against the ticking clock in a Venyard's 120 challenge. But this time it's not just tying flies to catch a fish, he has to build his rod too. We also have an eloquent and beautiful feel alive film where Hal's father, Mock Morgan, tells us how fishing has given his 86 years of life purpose. With giant shrimps in the news and Charlie with Hooked on YouTube, it's another packed fishing Britain here on Field Sports Channel. Just click the link to take a look. Uh -huh. 
Airheads is the TV show for air gunners by air gunners. We are looking at deflection and long ranges this week. Air gun world and air gunner technical editor Phil Price uses his cocktail stick method to show how the slightest twig can send your pellet pinging off in the wrong direction. James Marchington is in Scotland shooting rabbit at long ranges. Air gun world and air gunner editor in chief Terry Doe reveals his top tip for straight shooting. There are new 10 meter air gun world champions in hot air and air streaming looks at the air gun scene in South Korea among others. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Well, we are back next week. Please don't forget to subscribe or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into the constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.